Hi, I'm back. Thanks for watching my video today. We're going to be in section 12, three. All right, just kidding. That was silly. Um, we are doing quotients. I just embarrassed my son. Sorry. I'm trying to be funny because this gets old after a while. Quotients of radicals. I don't like not being with you all. I feel funny talking to myself. All right, so we did multiplication. We did addition and subtraction. So we had to first simplify, and then for addition subtraction, you had to make sure you had like radicals, and then for multiplication, you just had to make sure that all perfect squares were pulled out. Quotients or division is gonna be a little different. So we are going to talk about a property, first of all, when you have the square root, big fatty square root of x over y. So it's the square root of a fraction. It is the same thing as the square root of the numerator divided by the square root of the denominator. So you can think of it as it's, kind of, it's distributed over division. So it will be helpful to be able to go back and forth to do it both ways. So you could write uh, the square root of 2 over the square root of 7 is equal to the square root of 2 sevenths. Okay. All right. So there is something very important to keep in mind about fractions. So put on your notes an asterisk because this is important. Or you pull out your highlighter or something. But something to um, make this stand out on your page. Okay. All right. So. There is a, um, a term called simplest radical form, which you've heard probably, simplest radical form. All right, when you have a fraction in simplest radical form, you need to make sure that there are no radicals in the denominator. See, I, I missed up, I messed up, I ran out of room for denominator, but you get it. So no radicals in the denominator. And number two, the radicand in the numerator is as small as possible. The radicand in the numerator is as small as possible. And you're like, wait a minute, I don't remember radicand. Okay, the radicand is this dude right here. Okay, so if you have your square root, your radicand is in there. In fact, you know what, I'll write this. I'll write it like this, radicand. Okay? That number needs to be as small as possible, so any perfect squares you gotta pull out. Okay, so let's go back to our two, square root of two over two, square root of seven. Square root of two over square root of seven. No radicals in the denominator. Oops, we have a radical in the denominator. Okay, so this is how you fix it. You're gonna multiply by one. And you're sitting there going, Mrs. Cardi, multiplying by one does nothing because it's the identity property of multiplication. You are absolutely right and kind of wrong too because one can take on several forms. It can look like this it can look like this. It can look like uh, square root of seven over the square root of seven, right? All, all three of these are the number one. So I'm gonna choose to write my number one in a special way that helps me eliminate the radicals in the denominator. So we're gonna multiply by, I'm gonna pick square root of seven over the square root of seven. Now this is one, right? Square root of seven over square root of seven is one. Why is this so helpful 
in eliminating radicals in the denominator? Well, if you multiply through, square root of 2 times square root of 7 is the square root of 14, divided by square root of 7 times the square root of 7 is the square root of 49, which is 7. Do you have a radical in the denominator anymore? Magically, you don't. So keep in mind, you have this kind of magical one. You get to manipulate it and turn it into whatever is helpful to you. And your helpful is going to come from the denominator. Okay, is the radicand in the numerator as small as possible? Well, 14 breaks down to two times seven. There are no perfect squares, so we're done. Do not divide seven by 14 because this is not 14. This is the square root of 14, totally different number, okay? I will shave off your eyebrows in your sleep if you do that. Do not divide those two because this is the square root of 14. This is a plain old seven, okay? All right, let's do this again. Let us look at... All right, example. Write in simple radical form. And we're gonna do the square root of five over the square root of seven. Write in simple radical form. I'm gonna give you a second, you try it. Remember our magic, use your math magic, okay? And then look up and see if you did it correctly. Okay, did you use your magical one? So in this case, it will be square root of seven over square root of seven, again, because our denominator from the first one is, so that's a square root of seven, this is a square root of seven, so our denominators are the same. And you did not divide the 35 and the seven because that's not a 35, that's a square root of 35. So hopefully everyone's eyebrows are still attached to their little faces, okay? All right, so we've tried that. Let's try something else. Let's try doing a, the same idea, right in simple radical form. Now this one, you know, let's call this one A. So this one we'll call B. This, this way we don't have to keep write, rewriting the directions all the time because they're the same. Eight divided by the square root of 24. All right, the square root of 24. Well, the square root of 24 can simplify. So maybe that will help us. Let's simplify square root of 24. See if that does anything. So 24 becomes two times two times three. Two times two times three times, let's see. Oh, one more two, there we go. So two times two times three times two square root of 24. All right, and we can simplify it. So this is still an eight in the numerator over, we'll pull those out. So two square root of six. All right, is this in simple radical form? Are there no radicals in the denominator? <laughs> Wrong. We have a radical in the denominator. So let's go ahead and fix that. We multiply by square root six over the square root of six. All right, so we've got eight square root six divided by square root six times square root six is just six, right? Square root of 36 is six times two is 12. Are we completely simplified? Now eight and 12, those numbers can be reduced. That fraction, 8 twelfths, can be reduced. So 4 goes into 8 twice, 4 goes into 12 three times, so 2 square root 6 over 3. And are we dividing the square root 6 and the 3? No. Keep those eyebrows. All right, next, let's do a C. Let's do square root of 75 over 8. Now, before you go all crazy, double check. Does eight go into 75 evenly? Does not appear to. So let's go ahead and do square root, change it into square root 75 over square root eight. All right. 
Now we need to simplify everything. So 75, that's three times 25, isn't it? So this can be written as five square root three over eight can be simplified. That can be written as two square root two. All right, let's check. Are we in simple radical form? Mer nope, we've got a radical in the denominator. So we have to multiply by one. Pick your one strategically. Let's use square root two over square root two. All right, so square root three times square root two is square root six, so five square root six for the numerator over square root two times square root two is two, and we already have this two here, times four, uh, two is four, so there we go. Is our fraction reduced? Five fourths, looks good. Are we reducing with the six? No, we're not. All right, now let's change up the instructions a little bit. And let's do, uh, let's see, it says do the operations, do the operations, and write in simple radical form. going to use the square root of 24 over the square root of 50 divided by square root of 27 over square root of 8. Okay, here we go. When you are dividing fractions, you actually multiply by the reciprocal. So let's do that. So square root 24 over square root 50 times square root 8 over square root 27. Okie dokes. Now, nothing is simplified. I don't want to multiply 8 by 24 because those are huge numbers. My little brain can't deal with that. So I'm going to first simplify each radical before I do anything else. So square root of 24... Let's see, that will turn into a, I think I've already done this one today, two square root six, is that right? Looks good. Over square root 50, let's see, that's a two times 25, so five square root two, times square root eight is two square root two, over square root of 27, uh, three square root three. Okay. Now, this makes life interesting. We can cross cancel, my dears. Square root two and square root two are the same number, so they can cancel each other out. Let's see, do we have any other cancels? Hmm. Square root six and square root three. So this becomes a square root two, doesn't it? Okay, so let's see what we've got. I've got a two, a square root two times a two. So that would be four square root two divided by, oh my gosh, five times three, 15. I have no square roots, no radicals in my denominator. Guys, we didn't even have to do the fancy multiply by the, the magical one on this because we were very smart and canceled out things. Okay, let's call that one A. We'll do one more and then I'll be done. So square root 12 over square root 50 minus square root 27 over square root eight. And at least feel kind of like we've used all these numbers already, but we're just doing a different operation now. So we're doing subtraction. So let's go ahead and simplify each of the radicals individually. So square root 12, that turns into a two square root three. And square root 50 turns into a five square root two minus, we said that was three square root three from above because we already did that one over and oh, we did eight as well. 2 square root 2. 
Okay. Are the denominators the same? No, they're not. All right. So before we go ahead and make this all tricky and hard, let's go ahead and put these each in simple radical form. So we're going to multiply this fraction by square root 2 over square root 2. And this fraction on the right will get multiplied by the same thing. So this will give me 2 square root 6 over 10 minus, this will give me 3 square root 6 over 4. So now we're in a little bit better position to be doing math that we did in fourth grade. The common 